So good morning, everyone, or afternoon, depending on where you're at. Thank you all so much for joining today's as NOAA University Spotlight. I'm Anissa Nunez, the Assistant Manager of Education at ESNOAA, and I will be facilitating this webinar. For this session, we're going to ask that you do grab a pen and notepad because there will be a few activities along the way. Also, please be aware of the chat area on the GoToTraining menu. So if you guys have questions or would like to provide feedback, uh, this is where you can do that. And today we have with us Megan Beachling, the Director of Marketing and Communications, and Madeline Smith, the Communications Supervisor here at NOAA. And their goal today is to show you how you can set up a marketing campaign for your agency. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and make Megan presenter here and let these two take it away. Thank you so much, ladies. All right, it is my pleasure to be here. So I'll wait for that prompt to show up. All right, showing my screen now. Is everyone able to see my screen, Anissa, and start this? Yes, we're good, thank you. We're all good. All right, so I'm gonna turn my camera on. I'm gonna ask for um, Madeline to turn her camera on as well. Hello, everybody, so you can see my face. We introduce ourselves. There you go, hi, Madeline. Um, so I'm Megan Lang, the Director of Marketing and Communications um, here at ASNOAA. Um, so we, uh, I've been spending the last like 13 or so years helping small businesses um, with their fundraising, marketing, development uh, goals, uh, setting up campaigns for uh, reaching out to clients, prospects, and other businesses. Madeline, you want to do an introduction to yourself as well? Hello, everyone. So I'm Madeline Smith. I am the communication supervisor here at ASNOAA. And my responsibilities are mainly to build content. So all of the content that you see in the form of resources on our website, all of the email marketing content, I know you guys get a lot of emails from me. So um, I'm in charge of all of that. All right, so let's dive right into the uh, presentation. Um, so in doing so, we're gonna turn off our camera so you guys can focus on uh, the information on each slide. Uh, if you've joined me before in any of my sessions, you know that I am very information dense. So get ready, we're gonna go through a lot. There's a lot on the slides, um, but it's a lot of takeaways um, for you guys to be able to take the slides when we um, send it to you afterwards with the recording. Uh, we'll have resources as well that we'll be sending and a lot of templates that you guys will be able to use uh, to implement this in one campaign or many campaigns. All right, so turning off my camera here and we'll get started. All right, so today um, we're gonna be building um, a marketing campaign or I should say you guys are gonna be building. That's where the pen and paper is gonna come in handy. Um, so we're going to focus on a single organizational goal that you are looking to kind of accomplish, enhance, um, update, uh, and we're going to focus on one segment uh, of your prospect clients or lost uh, lost clients. Um, and this is so that we can have one solid kind of focused campaign that drives results that you can then scale, mimic, or um, duplicate later on. Um, so there you go. And the 10 steps we're going to go through today is um, defining your goals. Uh, determining how you're going to measure uh, progress and thus success. Uh, we're going to identify the target audience that you're going to want to hone in on today. Uh, determine where and what your audience consumes, so exactly what kind of marketing you'd want to build in order to get the most engagement and interaction um, for your desired result. Uh, we're going to detail your value prop, determine a call to action, and thusly build out um, a whole marketing message, um, kind of a formula that you can plug and play for any kind of your marketing campaigns. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of templates and resources we can give you guys to follow along later um, to set a budget. Um, Determine who is doing what, that's where you assign and delegate tasks to keep things manageable um, for yourself or whoever may be helping you. And then actually putting this bad boy on a calendar um, and setting some launch timelines. All right, so let's kind of jump right into it. Uh, this is a pretty interactive uh, webinar here. So one, step one, define your goals. Um, this is important. Why? <laughs> it helps you focus your marketing efforts and it creates a standard for what a successful campaign will look like to determine your ROI. So 
having a goal in mind keeps your efforts uh, very focused. So what are we trying to accomplish? Does this help us accomplish it? No, it helps you not veer off track, which is very easy with marketing because there's so much to do and so many things out there. Um, a good marketing goal is a SMART goal. Um, I'm sure everyone here on this uh, session has heard of SMART goals or has worked with them, especially knowing um, as NOAA University how they do your sales pipeline at EPIC. But just as a reminder, a SMART goal is specific measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. And we're going to go through an actual example of building out a SMART goal, so stay tuned on that one. Um, the key is that a marketing goal should fit within your larger organizational goals um, and ultimately helps you um, get more revenue. Um, and if that's not happening, then we need to adjust the marketing goal, we need to adjust some tactics, and make sure that it is fitting within your ultimate goal of making more money. <laughs> All right. So we have some example goals uh, for marketing here, just to kind of get your brainstorm juices flowing. Um, marketing goals can be for you to promote a new product or service. Maybe you're just trying to increase brand awareness because you're just starting out in a new uh, neighborhood or community, or you just did a grand opening and you're trying to get people to even know you exist. Um, you want to gather customer feedback or content. Maybe you're trying to get more reviews. Uh, you want to send out a survey uh, to see how your customer calls are going. Um, maybe you want more content um, on your website or Facebook and you want customers to submit that content for you. Um, boost user engagement. Maybe your Facebook has kind of fallen flat and you want to get more people using um, and interacting uh, on your Facebook. Maybe your website, you really haven't seen a lot of people visiting it or filling out a form. So you want to have a, you want to create a campaign that boosts engagement on your website. Or maybe you have an app that you just launched. Uh, we had a bunch of people that signed up for a glove box. So we want to talk about maybe launching to your customers ideas about what we can do to promote your glove box app. Or maybe you have a new mobile app or an aging portal. Um, upcoming events are big for local insurance agents. Maybe you're doing, you're sponsoring a booth, you're sponsoring a little league, you're having a, a parking lot tent kind of sale that you're joining, um, any kind of upcoming event, there's goals there. Um, setting up a co-op marketing program, that's where you um, connect with another local business and say, hey, you know, if you buy a slice of pizza, you get a free insurance quote down the road, or you get a free insurance quote, and you get a free beer at at Jerry's, I don't, any of it. So that's, that's um, co-oping with another business, maybe to put on an event or to create a discount. Um, building a referral network, um, that's where you work with your professional, uh, your professional network. Um, increasing your customers, uh, maybe you're doing a prospecting campaign, cross-sell, win back, um, and then of course improving retention rate. All right, so we're going to actually build out a marketing campaign um, show by example. Um, so we selected the goal uh, to increase customers. Easy, right? Um, I have a situation that just came across my desk. Um, I connected with a mortgage company who they're going to send me leads um, for their homeowner's insurance. Um, they're going to send me leads as they come in, which is awesome. So I have a game plan for that. But they also now are offering this 1,000 um, recent customer list that I have permission to communicate with. What do I do with this list? All right, I got my leads. Now what do I do with them? So I'm going to create a SMART goal around this. Um, what I want to see is quote activity. Um, quote activity, I know as soon as I can get a quote in the door and I can get them in the phone, I can close it. So my goal for marketing is to get more quotes for my company. So my SMART goal is to increase my home insurance quote activity. Um, it's measurable because I want to increase it by 20%. Um, it's from that mortgage company email list, so it's very obtainable and it's relevant. I want to hit this now. Um, and I want to do this by the end of Q2, so it's timely. So I'm giving myself three months uh, to increase this by 20%. All right, so I want to take a pause right here. Um, and I want to get you guys brainstorming. Um, so we can take one minute uh, and say, have you guys come up with different marketing goals. Um, we can take a look at these example goals here. What are you guys coming into this webinar, workshop? What are you looking to build? What kind of goals do you guys have in mind? Um, so I'm going to pull up some attendees, maybe hone in on a couple of, of people here. 
see what you guys were hoping to kind of build out. Let's see. Um, I'm going to ask Emily Woodhall. So Emily, what did you guys, what kind of marketing campaigns are you guys looking to accomplish at, at your company right now? Let's see if we can get you, yeah, unmuted. What kind of goals are you looking to do? Oh, we can hear you typing. So Emily, do you, let's see, oh. any, yeah. I, sorry, I didn't realize that I was, okay. Um, We definitely wanna boost user engagement and just, and I would like to overall build a referral network. Um, I've tried a couple of different referral programs and they haven't worked that awesome. Okay. So I would definitely like to improve that. Perfect. All right, so you're picking the boost user engagement um, and and then also seeing what you can do with the referral network. We have examples for that in here as well. Awesome. Um, yeah. All right, so take this minute, you guys, keep writing down, chat in questions or, hey, I have, I'm going to pick this goal or what do you think about this as a smart goal? Let's see, I'm going to also pick another uh, another victim from here. I mean. A volunteer. <laughs> um, I'm going to grab Holly. Holly, what kind of goal are you looking to accomplish today? And you have been unmuted as well. Oh, don't know if we can hear Holly. Maybe we can come back to her. All right, anybody else have any kind of goals that you guys are writing down? Nope. All right, well, we'll keep moving on. Oh, here we go, Christine. Um, we are a newly independent agency. We like to increase our brand awareness. All right, Christine, that's a good one. So let, we're gonna have, we have another one for, we got brand awareness, we have user engagement, we have referral network. Um, so turning that into a smart goal for brand awareness would be something like, um, I want to have um, X amount of website visitors or X amount of um, press mentions, um, X amount of Facebook followers um, within the next, you can say 30 days or three months. All right, Holly Linder wants to do brand awareness too. Paula wants to promote a service. Let's see, we got Facebook posts, boost social media engagement. Referral network seems to be a pretty big one. Update the current website. Yep, get more people onto your website. Okay, these are good goals. I'm glad everyone's writing this down so you can keep following along and, and building it as we go. Okay, so step two. All right, determine how you measure the success of your campaign. So that's awesome. You have this overarching goal. Now how do you make it manageable and track it? Um, so we want to create small check-in points throughout your campaign to make sure it's easy to execute and track. Um, these are often referred to as key performance indicators. They let you know how progress is going towards your overall goal. Um, we have a bunch of examples here uh, for promoting a new product or service, um, which Paula, I know you had that written down. So that one, a nice KPI is saying, okay, this month I want this amount of quotes. So that's what I'm gonna aim for and measure each month to make sure my campaign is getting in those number of quotes. Uh, for brand awareness, which a bunch of you guys message, uh, indicated, that's um, more social media mentions, so Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever you're picking. Um, press mentions, uh, let's get you guys going with your local media, newspaper outlets, um, and website visitors. Um, user engagement, a bunch of people picked that one. That's blog shares. Um, again, social media, email interactions, looking at your website visitors, um, how many people are using your new app. Um, all right, oops, that jumped back, sorry about that. All right, so if you don't see the progress you're hoping for, it indicates that, hey, you should probably pivot, revisit your strategy, and adjust your message until you start seeing those KPIs come in. So they're a really good um, pulse, like a health check on how your campaign is going. All right, so here's an example of a KPI so that you guys can see as we're building it out. And I want you to write down what you think for the campaign you just picked. Um, what kind of key check-in points or numbers would allow you to know you're doing a good job and it's working, the campaign's working. 
All right, so I want to increase quote activity by 20% in three months. Um, so what that would look like, my KPI, I'm going to check in every month um, on my different uh, what's coming in through my quote forms, and it's going to see if I get a 6.66% increase each month. Um, I'm also going to take a look at, say, the emails that are going out. What kind of open rates am I getting? Uh, what are they clicking on? Are people reading that? Is that getting them to go to my website? Um, I'm going to take a look at um, phone records. Hey, have a lot of people I've been calling from that list sound interested or not? Do I need to change my messaging to get to this overall KPI here? All right. Any questions on KPIs? All right, we're going to keep moving forward here. All right, identifying your target audience. So this is um, where a lot of people just say, hey, I want to just reach out to all of my clients at the same time or all of my prospects. But if you're trying to please everyone, chances are you're going to end up appealing to no one. So um, you want to focus on the type of audience, one type of audience at a time. This helps you stay relevant, timely, and keeps your message very personalized. That way you can tailor your campaign based on your audience's demographics, preferences, interests. Um, it helps you really hone in your messaging. So key characteristics, um, kind of questions that you want to answer fall under these main categories here. Um, and again, we're going to send this out to you guys, um, and we're going to do a little exercise um, for it. So for our example here, um, different campaigns that you guys are running. So you want to promote a new product or service, Paula, take a look at your um, client audience base. So um, I have mostly people aged 60 to 65. They're looking to retire. Um, and go into Medicare. So that's the, I want to focus in on that very, and that age group and where they are in their lifetime. Um, let's say you are trying to increase your uh, commercial lines. Um, so you want to hone in on just local restaurant owners in your town center. So your messaging is going to be focused on what it's like owning a restaurant and the problems that that causes and how you can help solve them. Um, first time homeowners, I'm going to focus on certain zip codes because they might have a different lifestyle or income bracket than others, so my messaging would differ. A lot of you guys talked about building a referral network or a co-op program. Pick the different segments of the um, professional networks you're going for because it's going to be different messaging for each. So the mortgage professionals, realtors, financial planners, um, and so forth. Um, say you really have a lot of home policies, you only have um, um, mono-line clients and you want to do multi-line, so you want to hone in on those specific ones and start building out personas, uh, answer each question from the previous slide. So what does that look like? All right, so my example, um, people on this list, when I looked into them, uh, their interests, their likes, what their age group is, did some research, this is the age group for first first time homeowners. Um, this is my location where I'm honing in on them. Um, this is kind of the income bracket in that area, They're just coming into expendable income. So they're starting to try to build their lifestyle, um, their education level. These guys in this area are very well educated. So I wanna focus my messaging on how I can answer questions, how they're very knowledgeable and willing to take my time, walk you through different options. Um, I know where their interests are, which is going to start helping me build ideas about where they are um, so I can put my messaging in front of them where they are interested. Um, I know what their challenges are so I can talk about problems that I solve for them um, and I know where I can make my connections. And it's very important to know where they are in the buyer's journey. Somebody who has never heard of you yet is a very different message versus somebody who has been working with you for years. All right, so this takes some significant time to kind of put together. Um, so we actually have a resource. Oh, we'll get to that in this resource over here. I'll jump there. Um, and I know Maddie just also included um, a link in the chat um, where you can click on these and build out your own personas and build that out yourself, answering each question, each prompt, uh, which is really important so that you can know who, how to hone in and personalize your message. All right. Any questions on buyer personas? All right, Jim. Yes, great persona there that you have 
you have Medicare, your goal is to meet doctors and build their business, get them more patients. So hone in on who those doctors are, kind of answer these questions. It really, really helps drive and personalize your language to talk about those doctors. All right, another key step in building out any marketing campaign is to determine where and what your audience consumes. So now you kind of created out a general um, idea about who they are, um, what their interests are. Now you want to know where they are. All right, so um, for successful campaign, um, you need to know where they spend their time, where they prefer to consume. So an example is, say, an elderly prospect. Um, they most likely see your marketing campaign if it's mailed because they check their mail or they still read the newspaper. So maybe we get some newspaper advertising, some articles, radio ad, um, getting promoted at a local community center. Um, a young new driver, say you're trying to look for new people to get some auto quotes going. Um, they would most likely see your campaign on Twitter and Instagram. So that's where you'd want to focus your efforts um, or and they'd be looking at you on a mobile device. So you want to make sure your website is mobile friendly and responsive. Um, our example, a family just bought a house. Um, they moved into this neighborhood. So they're most likely to see my marketing campaign on Yelp and in community forums. So I'm gonna add that into my marketing campaign that people are probably researching, um, you know, restaurant reviews, business reviews, community forums, what's there to get involved in uh, this. So that's how that kind of gets built out. All right, here is um, example channels um, to kind of get your juices flowing again, all the different places, just kind of a, a quick starter list for, hey, this is the person I'm trying to reach. Here's all the different ways that I could potentially reach them. So um, somebody who is looking to get in front of the doctors would maybe want to do some in-person meetings. Uh, make sure you have some signage that is located around those doctor's offices, Jim, that you guys were trying to focus on. Um, somebody who is trying to build out their brand awareness to an audience. Um, you definitely want to do some public awareness, public relations and awareness. Um, do a lot more content marketing. Um, so here's just kind of a list, all encompassing. You can kind of take a look at and get some, brain, get some brainstorms going. All right, so for this specific campaign, uh, where we have that list of a thousand contacts we're trying to get in touch with, uh, the channels I'm going to select uh, I'm going to do some phone calls. Um, I'm going to do some direct email. Uh, I'm going to set up a direct email campaign. I'm going to hit them up with a letter. I'm also going to make sure my website, my landing page is um, solid on um, homeowners insurance and I have a good lead generating form. Again, I know my person is probably in Yelp and community forums looking for places to go in the neighborhood. Um, and then I'm also going to provide a packet to the mortgage company. All right, what kind of ideas have you guys, has this sprung up? Any questions, any, you guys wanna throw out in the chat, uh, different channels, different personas, who you'd wanna reach out to? All right, we'll keep moving. We'll have um, time for questions in the end as well. All right, so again, here is that resource that kind of funnels all of that, prompts you with different questions so that it builds that buyer persona, who they are, where are they consuming products, where you could you should focus your attention. Check this out. Um, Emmanuel has it in the chat as well, and this will also be sent to you after the presentation. All right, so um, detail your value prop is step five. Next step, you know who you're trying to reach out to, you know what you're trying to accomplish and you know where you're going to put it. So this kind of brings together everything um, into a, an elevator pitch basically. Um, it's important to note that the value prop of a specific campaign might be different from your overall value prop of your organization. So this is where some I see a lot of insurance agents they always just want to use the words hey you know we have more options for you. Um, we're a, we have a bunch of carriers so here you go. Um, instead you want to have a more targeted value for the specific campaign. So say you uh, are trying to promote a new product that you have or service for financial planning. So you want to hone in and create a value prop that talks just about financial planning. Um, 
you want to um, build out your referral network. Um, you want to hone in on, say, I'm reaching out to local roofers because when somebody upgrades their roof, um, the prices go down, they should probably check out their insurance rates. That's a great um, open door for me. So I'm going to focus on how I can help with my homeowner's insurance and getting um, their, their cost cut because they have a brand new roof, that kind of thing. So you want to hone in exactly, be very, very specific in your value prop. So think of it as your elevator pitch. It, um, it's very simple. What is the problem that you're solving or the solution you provide for that specific audience's need? All right. So what does this look like as an example? Um, so an example for the homeowners prospecting campaign. Um, talking to this mortgage owner, they're talking about it's new first time homeowner buyers. So we're, we're going to talk about how it's stressful and how we take the stress out of making that decision. Um, cause we have a reputation in the community, uh, where we vet, um, your coverage and help get you the right price. All right. So I see your questions, Christine and Jim, and we'll get to that. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So any questions on putting together a value prop? No, nope. you guys kind of, your elevator pitch is solid. You know who you're reaching out to, you know what their pain points are, and you're able to put it together in a sentence. All right, so we got that step going. Okay. Um, the next thing is to determine your call to action. Now, this is super important. I talk about calls to action in almost every single one of my uh, presentations. Um, so if you'll recall, um, it's this little lady here. You've seen her in a lot of my presentations, those that have done them. <laughs> um, you put your call to action on everything. Um, so what is a call to action? Uh, it's a step that you want your audience to take after seeing your message. Um, so it's usually an image or a line of text that prompts your visitors, leads customers to act. Um, it is crucial. So not just letting everybody know what you do, um, and how you help them, but exactly what they do now to get it uh, is, is, the, is the CTA. Um, so best practices for a CTA um, is to keep one per marketing piece. So one per email, ad, flyer, you're just asking them to do one action step. Um, ensure that that action is the natural next step. So a lot of marketers um, and businesses fail because they're reaching out to a cold prospect and the only button says buy now or get your insurance now. Um, some audiences might say, hey, um, that is a, a little premature. So what about just a free consultation or um, getting a quote started or just at answering some questions? Um, that's a little bit um, not as um, committal for somebody that might not even know who you are. Make sure it is a seamless experience, so less is more. Um, a lot of insurance agents have a full uh, easy links or uh, the applied radar quote right on their website and it asks a bazillion questions. So for when you're trying to build out a brand, you're trying to get that base of clients coming to your website and filling out forms, that's usually not good because it's a lot of questions. Um, so you want to minimize what we call barrier to entry as much as possible. Um, so just reduce the number of required fields, um, reduce the number of steps somebody has to do to actually get their information to you and have that next step accomplished. Um, visual appeal. So make sure it catches the eye of your audience right away um, and it makes it very clear. Um, so it has, there's large buttons, you change the color, it's bold, it's underlined um, of what you want them to do because everyone skims. All right, any questions on CTA, you guys? Okay. So here's some examples. Um, that you guys can actually copy and paste when um, you get this, and we'll send out um, a whole another PowerPoint that has just a bunch of CTAs too that you can copy and paste and add to your flyers, your emails, Facebook, your blogs, anything like that. 
So I'm gonna actually um, pause for a moment and let Maddie jump in here and talk about why these are some good CTAs. Right, oh, so as you can see, these are pretty simplistic. Um, the main purpose is to just get the person to click on whatever you want them to click on and complete that action. So as you can see, the text is nice and big. It takes up a good chunk of the screen or of the space. The actual photo in the background is not too dominant, so it doesn't take away from the text or the action that you're trying to lead to. And the um, images that are right next to it also kind of incorporate the button or lead your eyes to the button that you would like your audience to click on. So that is why this is a good CTA to mimic. All right, this is another great example. It's a little bit different just in the layout of, from the previous one. So this one also incorporates some pretty simplistic imagery, which is great. You do not want your images to distract from the overall purpose of the CTA. You want your focus to be on the wording. So you can see the wording is nice and big. It's pretty bold at the top, and then it leads right down into the button that you want someone to click on. So again, making sure that that button or the link that you would like people to click on is nice and big and takes up the majority of um, the space or the focus. So let's see another one. This is a great one. So this one is a little bit different than the previous two in the sense that the button is a lot bigger or the um, the actual call to action itself takes up the majority of the space. So as you can see again, the imagery that is used is nice and simple. There's maybe a few details that kind of lead your eyes into the main square in the center. So that's what you're going to want to focus on. Yeah, so for you guys trying to build out, um, I have a bunch of people here want to do some Facebook posts. You can copy and paste these. These are great. You would just add your um, value prop um, and the and kind of, hey, what, what, what are you offering? Who are you focusing on at the top up here? And then, boom, here's your strong CTA and you have your post. You can copy and paste this. Or you are trying to build out a better website, you can copy and paste this stuff. These are very good, clear examples, and we'll have more. We'll send you guys when you have a landing page that talks about this is what I offer, this is the problem I solve for you, and this is how I do it better than anyone else. Copy and paste, boom, here is your um, CTA. Um, anybody have any other ideas for CTAs? Say um, you're reaching out to. Uh, reaching out to uh, try to build out your network uh, to roofers, for example. Um, you're trying to connect maybe with the CTAs, hey, maybe we can build our businesses together. Click here to learn more. Um, you can have, say you're trying to reach out to medical professionals. Um, say, hey, we can help protect, keep you covered. We can help um, keep your clients at ease. I don't know, we can come up with different brainstorming ideas. You can send them away. We can pop them back and forth and brainstorm, or feel free to interrupt me, take yourself off mute, chat. We'll keep keep going. <laughs> All right, we'll keep going. We can always come back to this stuff. All right, number seven um, is building out the actual message. Um, so there is a formula um, for most marketing campaigns that you can follow that um, really don't fail, which is which is good because you can take this and then mimic it throughout all of your different campaigns. Um, first thing to think about is you want to always stick with your branding. So stay consistent with the colors and the fonts of your website or your Facebook page. Um, pick something you like um, because you're going to, if you have it on your landing page, you want it on your Facebook, you're going to want it on your business cards, on your signage, on the letter that you mail, on the flyer that you create. So make sure that you're always using very similar colors, similar fonts, similar styles. That way, especially building brand awareness, people start recognizing it automatically. You kind of do that uh, inherently. Like if you think of uh, specific golden arches that are on things and that yellow, you think McDonald's. Uh, you have a certain like red color with that white font, you think Coke. Um, 
it, the re there's a reason marketers do it. So try to stick with your branding, especially when you're building out your brand awareness. All right, so the formula um, that you always wanna stick with um, is going through what problem are you solving for this audience? Um, so this is going back to that value prop. It's what you always start with. Here's the problem that the person is uh, dealing with. Focus on them, not you. And then clearly define how you solve that problem. Um, so what product or service, what do you guys use? Um, that's your first step for any marketing campaign. Here's the issue, here's how I solve it. You get into building out a bigger message, it's how you are different from everyone else solving it. So why should they pick you? Um, how do they benefit more by going with you? Keep this specific again to the audience. So um, working with um, people where you're trying to get more Medicare clients, you know, uh, Medicare is really confusing. Um, there's so many different steps to navigate. You know, there's so many different exceptions in here and there. I can take that away from you. I can be your expert. I can navigate you through all that. I will take the time so that you understand and make sure that you are protected and you can retire in your golden years, um, happy and comfortable. <laughs> Done. What problems are you solving? You're empathizing with the problem. You can solve it. And here's how you're better and different. <laughs> Bam. There you go, Bonnie. <laughs> Um, and then you lead into the what are the next steps that you need to take, which is your CTA. Um, so again, what problem are you solving? How do you differentiate yourself? And then what are the next steps? Three easy questions to answer, and it makes an excellent marketing campaign every time. All right, so then we go back to the CTA. Um, and again, can't emphasize this enough, where a lot of campaigns fail is the CTA is maybe too early, too soon, or it's asking somebody to complete your goal. Uh, when you go on a first date, you don't propose, you just say, hey, maybe we should keep talking and go on another date. Make sure that um, we like each other. So make sure your audience knows how they're gonna benefit. Um, it's not an immediate jump to the end um, and that they're very clear on what will happen next, what will happen with the CTA, how it will help alleviate their pain point. Less is more, keep things skimmable, use bullet points, bold key phrases, utilize headers, um, use images, bold colors. You're just trying to capture their attention. Um, unfortunately, since I've started marketing, the uh, amount of seconds you have to capture people's attention has been steadily decreasing like crazy. So now out in the marketing world, they say you have three seconds to convince someone to keep reading before they move on, which is crazy. Okay. Um, now, I know we had a question, I believe it was Emily that asked it too, um, all the different places where you can build and design different marketing materials. Um, Canva, Emily, that's awesome that you use Canva. There's also spark.adobe.com, and these are hyperlinked when we send this out to you guys. There's Pixel Lead and Snappa. Um, these are some great resources to start, and we can always suggest more. Um, but these are basically drag and drop design programs that have templates, they're free to start, they have images, they have graphics, they have text, they have um, templated designs where all you have to go in and, and just type in your message and you are ready to rock, print it, done. We love these sites, we use them ourselves. All right, so what does this look like? Um, for the homeowner's prospecting campaign. All right, so my value prop, I just copied and pasted that right in here. This is kind of my opening statement, uh, an elevator pitch about how, how I'm different and help with that specific audience. Jumped into the problem. Um, when you buy a house, maybe it feels like you're jumping through all these different hoops. There's so much research, fees, paperwork, stress. I'm empathizing with them. The solution is that I want to make insuring your home one less thing you have to worry about. I'm here to help protect you. How am I different? Here you go. I've been in business for more than 10 years. My agency works with a dozen of different insurance companies. We work together to build the best product, you know, and then jump into your CTA. So value prop, problem, solution, differentiate CTA. This seems really simple. Um, and I, in all of my marketing presentations, I completely undersell what I do. <laughs> but
but my goal is that you can do it yourself. Um, so here's your formula. And how does this look in an actual marketing piece? There you go. Here is something that I created for free in Canva. Didn't pay a dime for this, downloaded it, copied and pasted it. Um, I just threw this in Outlook for right now, um, which we'll get to in a second of all the different places you can use it. Here is my intro. I am starting with the problem using the formula. What's your problem? I'm emphasizing with you. How do I solve that problem? How do I differentiate? I added a little bit more information about myself and then how do you actually get it? One, two, three, done. Here's my CTA. Here's how you get in contact with me. You can see that formula is, you'll start noticing it in our emails too, out to you guys. <laughs> um, we use it in everything because it's rock solid um, to get people to click. So that's what it actually looks like. Um, different places, as a side note, for emails, you can just use Outlook, however you can't track it. Um, we suggest MailChimp, Constant Contact, Active Campaign. Or if you don't want to do it yourself, um, we have a new offering with Agency Revolution. Um, so that's how you can inquire and get that conversation started to get somebody to do this for you. Okay, so any questions going from the simple formula to how it looks in an actual marketing piece? No questions there? All right, so we'll move on. I know Maddie, we'll, if we have time in the end, we'll go back through the message because um, there's that's a really, really important part and it's often the hardest part. Okay, next step is setting a budget. Um, so this varies wildly. Um, it varies based on the type of campaign and channel that you select for your specific area. Um, depends on where you are uh, located. Um, things cost more in cities than they do in rural areas. So there's no real um, game plan or solid, you know, this is this helps you every time answer I can give you, unfortunately. But what I can give you are a ton of resources that help walk you through in a step-by-step -step process. Um, so here's a link. And again, we're sending this out immediately after with the recording. Um, here's a link for um, how to manage marketing budget, creating with, with templates. Here's more templates um, in project management software we recommend. Here's just Excel spreadsheets you can download. Here's more Excel spreadsheets you can download. So, um, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Please let Maddie know um, or send them to Anissa. She can forward them to us um, and we can help answer any kind of budget questions because it's just so personal. Um, but typically what you do with the marketing budget is you set a cap. I am only comfortable spending this amount of money um, and then you work backwards from there. So let's talk, let's do an example. We're gonna do a live example with Maddie and I about putting together a budget. So um, I said, hey, I'm comfortable spending $1,000. That's all I wanna spend on these 1,000 contacts for three months um, to try to get more quotes and get some insurance clients. So Maddie and I worked backwards. So we started at 1,000 for the 1,000 prospect list. What did I have included in the campaign phone calls? Um, it's up to you if you uh, include human capital in your budgets um, as dollar amounts or not. Um, in emails, I'm going to, um, instead of sending it out to a designer, I'm going to try to take this on for myself in Canva, just play around in there, but you will not be disappointed. Um, I want to do um, very informed data tracking on my emails, so I'm going to select MailChimp. Um, MailChimp is free for up to 2,000 contacts, so I love free. Everyone who knows me, I'm always trying to find you free resources, um, so I'm going to use MailChimp. The direct mail, um, I got some letterhead. I checked my inventory. Always use what you have first, so that's zero dollars. I'm going to go for broke because I've, I've so far spent zero. <coughs> I'm going to pick a super brightly colored envelope, so I went to Staples and I got a price quote there. Postage is usually one of your most expensive if you're doing first class mail, or you can look at doing postcards. <coughs> the flyer, um, I'm gonna give a flyer to my mortgage company and include it in my direct mail piece. Um, so I went to Staples. You wanna make sure if you're gonna spend the time and the money and the effort doing something, don't print a flyer just on printer paper. Please, please, please don't do that. Um, it doesn't cost that much and it's easy. Staples also has templates. 
just go to your Staples, Xerox, um, you know, Office Max, anything like that, and print on nice glossy paper. Um, I also always want to throw in my business cards to any kind of marketing campaign that's physical. <coughs> I have a ton in stock. Yelp and community forums are free. So that brings my total to 950. I have $50 under budget. Huzzah! <laughs> um, any questions walking through an example budget for a marketing campaign? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay. Maddie, would you mind taking over this slide as I clear my throat? <coughs> of course. So now we're going to move into determining who will be doing what in your marketing campaign. I know that we're all thinking that we can do it all, but uh, that's just not realistic. So you're going to have to set up a team. So you, first you have to determine who your team is going to be. Here are some key steps to keep in mind for who to assign and what roles that they should fill. So first you're gonna need a project manager. And this person is going to be in charge of your overall campaign execution. They are going to be the people meeting with every other person in your team to make sure that everything is chugging along and you are meeting deadlines and um, basically keeping everybody on track. <clears throat> you are going to need someone to write your value prop, the message and the CTA. That's really important. You need it clear, concise, um, messaging across your campaign. You don't want to deviate. That can cause confusion in your audience and just kind of derail your whole campaign. So we're going to avoid that. You're going to need someone to design the actual marketing pieces. So you're going to need someone to design the emails, all of the flyers that you would like to put out. Um, if you would like a letter written, that's something that you're going to need someone to put together. And you're going to need someone to launch the campaign, to actually hit publish, to send to the printer, to send to the email, really to handle all of the logistics. Following up, you're going to need a monitor. You're going to need someone to monitor and report on your progress. This is really key going back to the project manager. This is a task that they will probably handle. Um, in my personal experience, it's good to have multiple people doing that. So, Basically, what this entails is checking in with your teammates, making sure that all of their tasks are getting done on time, you're hitting deadlines for the overall campaign, and it's important to keep your KPIs in mind for these deadlines or for determining deadlines. So you want to make sure that you are hitting your KPIs consistently, and if not, it's time to regroup and figure out what how you should pivot as a team where you should change your focus and how you should change your campaign overall just to get better results. Then you have to follow up on your leads or engage with clients. Typically, um, I think agents like to handle this themselves. Um, in my professional experience, it's good to do that just to put a face to a name and to um, manage relationships with leads. So um, it's good to establish a timeline of when you will follow up with the people that you are reaching out to um, to make sure that you are capitalizing on your marketing efforts and getting the best results and then at the end you need to measure the results of the end of your campaign so this is a good opportunity to meet again as a team and just kind of go through what everyone done and the results that you got and then you can determine the effectiveness of this overall campaign and whether or not you would like to run something similar in the future. So again, this is going back and reviewing your KPIs that you set, making sure that everything was met or exceeded, and if not, how you could have changed the campaign or going back to when those routine meetings with your team, making sure that you pivoted correctly and how that change affect the overall um, success of your campaign. So really it's just a reflection on um, the campaign as a whole and determining whether or not you would like to run the same campaign or how you would change it for future marketing efforts. Are there any questions on this slide so far? I know I kind of ran through all of that really quick, but <laughs> I'm not getting any questions. So it seems like you guys, 
you guys are on it. You got it. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Maddie, too. That was excellent. Oh, thanks. No problem. Yeah. All right. So I know for some of you guys, there's only like one or two of you. So you're like, what do you mean? Assign this to your team. Um, that seems kind of silly. But what happens often with a lot of marketing campaigns, especially when you are super busy doing other things and you have so much more on your mind, <clears throat> it doesn't matter if it's just two of you or if it's just yourself having um, a listed out game plan for who is going to do what for each step helps you again make it bite-sized manageable and to make sure it does actually get done because with marketing stuff like this it's super easy to just kind of set it and leave it and forget to check in um, see progress pivot go back maybe who's putting together what how are we getting to a launch date launch dates are really easy to push off let's try to not do that <clears throat> So here's an example of just two people. Um, this is just Madeline and I. Um, she was laughing as I was putting it together because this is her typical day. <laughs> yes, this is very accurate. So don't get freaked out when I said, go back to your team. You can do this with two people, I promise. We do it every day. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, um, I signed myself as the project manager. She's in charge of writing the content, getting all the design going. I'm gonna do the actual phone calls. She's gonna physically send and print the letter, send and print stuff. Um, so again, don't need to walk through this, but you can do it. You can see it as an example at live here with what Maddie and I would do with just the two of us. All right, next important thing to make sure that this actually gets going um, is to put it in a calendar. Um, establish deadlines, put it in your Outlook, your work calendar, whatever you guys use um, to, uh, to make sure that you have a goal that you're reaching um, and it's there. So, so you always want to start with the launch date and then work your way backwards. So <clears throat> I'll show you guys an example. Um, you take a look at how long it's going to take you guys to set up those first nine steps that we went through. Um, that's going to take me, say, two weeks. I'm going to go into Canva. I'm going to design my stuff. I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to go to Staples. I'm going to print everything out. I'm going to have everything ready to put together two weeks. Let's do this. Okay. So you put that on the calendar and then um, you're going to work backwards from there, making sure each step is listed out. A typical campaign um, for you to start seeing results is about one month. Um, up to one year for the highest return on investment. So if you're doing a marketing campaign, give yourself at least a month to start seeing things and to start measuring that final result for your KPI. Once a campaign is launched, set up followed updates for emails and phone calls. Um, often with marketing campaigns, you launch it out there. You put up a Facebook ad, um, you send an email out, um, you put up your Yelp page and then you just wait for people to come to you. Nope, the key is to always have phone follow-up phone calls. You're checking your email, seeing the results, click-throughs, open rates, responding, um, sending follow-up emails. You can, and there's easy ways to have automation set up in like MailChimp, Constant Contact, After Campaign that allow you to do this automatically. Here's some example timeframes, again, depending on what you guys selected for your campaign so that you can kind of see some of the cadence that we recommend. For mailers, um, you send the mailer. Typically, you follow up a week later with a phone call. Hey, did you see my letter? Then you follow up two weeks later with an email. Then you follow up with an email once a month um, for two more months minimum. So usually, if you're doing a mailing campaign, they're um, per quarter. If you have an emailed event, um, it's best to say you're doing a big brand awareness or an event at your um, company or you're trying to put together an event for local businesses to try to meet you and get to know you and talk about um, how you guys can build each other's clientele. Um, usually you want to do that at least one month before the event um, and you follow up each week. <laughs> typically for events. So follow up with a phone call, uh, then a reminder one week later, and then a reminder the day of. Facebook contests, um, we'll, looking at the time, we can um, spell this out in a little bit, um, if we have enough time, basically how you create a contest with a countdown event, um, and the kind of example timeline you can see there. All right, so what does that actually look like? Here you go. Um, here is a calendar that I put together. 
Um, I'm going to update my Yelp and community forums. Um, make sure that is completely ready. Um, I have my website going. I want to make sure that I've started my Yelp and my stuff. All right, Bonnie, we'll get you going for contests. We'll follow up later. Um, I'm going to drop my flyer and pack it off for the mortgage company, sit down with them, make sure they know everything I offer. And so that is a solid connection there. I'm going to physically mail my letter here. One week later, I'm going to do my follow-up phone calls to the 1,000 people. Then I'm going to send another email from my marketing a week later. Usually, you want to give emails a week um, before you say, okay, we're done, we're closing it, now we can kind of check out the results, the email open rates, the click rates. Same thing with Facebook posts. Mailers usually give yourself a week for the stragglers to come in. Um, going into May, um, two weeks later, so I'm gonna go back, so one, two, two weeks later, I'm gonna do another follow-up email, give myself about a week to report back on it, and then you always wanna have your phone calls based on you know email results, quote activity, taking a look at those KPIs, who's responding, who's not responding, how do I need to adjust my marketing, that kind of thing. Then I'm gonna enter my people into a drip email where it emails them once a month. Um, probably missed the boat on them needing homeowners insurance, so at least once a month we'll get some kind of educational thing out to them um, to make sure I'm staying in front of them when their expiration dates are coming up. All right, and then you take a look at it um, at the end of your campaign to see how it was going and how you should pivot your strategy. All right, so that was a lot. You have a solid campaign under your belt. You have ideas, resources, templates. You're gonna try it with one, then you're gonna continue to add to it. You're gonna build it out in different automations, and then you can scale it and continue to do this for multiple campaigns, multiple segments, and multiple audiences. So we have a few minutes. I wanna make sure that we are answering your questions. So uh, taking a look at the chat, unmute yourself, hey, you just heard all this, you heard the 10 steps, you saw the examples, what does this look like for your actual campaign you were thinking of? What, feel free, please ask away. The floor is yours. Don't all jump up at once. <laughs> all right, so we had some people asking about how do you build out a Yelp campaign? So I have you written down, we'll have Madeline follow up and help you guys talk about setting up um, a Facebook, Yelp, those kind of social media campaigns, what that could look like. Um, I know Bonnie, you said that you wanted to know how to do a Facebook contest. So Maddie, we can sit and we can um, take some time showing you guys that. Um, Holly, you wanted to talk about glove box. Um, so when you want to start, you want to try to get more people engaged in a specific app. Um, a great way to do that. I know, I think glove box had a couple emails that go out. Um, but videos are really good. Um, videos that show you using it, videos that walk clients through um, how it helps them, what kind of problems it solves. Um, why, you know, you guys getting excited about it. I know a lot more video marketing would really work, especially with Glovebox because it helps save your clients a lot of time. Um, just trying to make insurance fun and exciting is hard to do in writing. <laughs> so video marketing is really key for that. Um, let's see, is there a good place to start with a website outside of GoDaddy? Yeah. Um, so Brandon, good places for websites. Um, if you're gonna do it yourself, we recommend um, Wix, W-I-X, or Weebly. We like Wix a lot. Um, that's very similar to GoDaddy, where it has um, suggested templates, um, drag and drop editors, where you can pick, hey, this is what my site can look like. You just kind of enter in your info. Um, it's a really good system. I think it's only like $14.99 last time I checked, a month. Um, another place where you strongly recommend um, for very insurance specific, somebody else doing it for you type of websites is Agency Revolution. Um, and that email is grow at agencyrevolution.com. I will put that in here. 
um, you can just see their prices, what they have. They have specific stuff right for um, as NOAA members, and they're great for uh, websites. All right, Christine, um, Kristen, um, it was really nice seeing you again in one of our marketing sessions. Feel free to reach out as you always do. We can answer questions um, as you guys build it out. So Christine, um, for sharpening up your website, um, we we have we strongly recommend you take a look at um, your carrier portals. Um, they have a whole bunch of articles, blogs, um, calculators, interactive guides, forms, articles, things that people can download. Um, if you are appointed with Safeco, they have hands down the best one possible. Um, so I would log into your Safeco agent portal. They also have a website auditor. So you can type in your website and it will send you a personalized audit recommending all the places. It gives you a grade um, and it recommends all the places to sharpen up your website, what might be missing, what you might need to be building differently. Um, it's, it's a great place to go. And then, yes, Maddie, thank you for jumping to it. We also have um, blogs and different resources that we can send you guys on websites. And there's one she sent just now in the chat. Yep, Bonnie, you guys use the Travelers and Safecos all the time, which is awesome. All right, Brandon, how about adding content to get your biz through Google reviews? Okay, so Brandon, do you want to unmute yourself? This is a really good question too. What are you currently doing for your Google reviews to kind of enhance, get more people to leave them? Yeah, I mean, right now, well, I'm, I guess I'm, I mean, I'm emailing them and texting them to share the profile stuff on the Google review. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as, you know, when you go in, you, you look for my agency, Brockman Insurance Group, there's like, you know, a couple people that are usually ahead of me on that. And I have more Google reviews than they do. So the question is, is how do I leap all those people without paying the money for the ad to do that? Ah, uh, so your search results on Google. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, reviews is one way. So the more reviews you can get, the better. Um, another thing you can do to get yourself higher in Google search rankings is um, um, highly, um, high, what, are, what am I thinking? Not authorized, authenticated um, backlinks in Google. So make sure um, you have a lot of different sites pointing back to your website. So LinkedIn is a, um, a strong, trusted, and heavily weighted um, website that Google um, uses in its rankings. So make sure your LinkedIn page is pointing back to your Google, your Google review page and your website. Um, what are some other ones? Mm -hmm. LinkedIn, Facebook, Yelp um, is another one. Facebook reviews also affect your Google rankings. So if you're focusing on reviews and review campaigns, also push people to Facebook. How do you um, Google my business on your phone? Okay, um, I will get to you in a second, Bonnie. So I'm having, making sure all the places that you can get your website listed, uh, community forums, Better Business Bureau, um, if you're on the Chamber of Commerce, local business sites, um, all of your local directories. Uh, I have a list of local directories to make sure that you're listed to get those backlinks. That helps a lot on Google. And you start showing up more and more as, as search results from all of those different sites. Um, the other thing is content. So as long as do you have a blog yet on your website or any kind of updated content that you refresh on your website pretty often that people can read? No, I don't. Um, I'd actually like to, because we do social, social survey, which automatically populates an email. Mm -hmm to the customer and they fill that out. And yeah. you know, I've got a lot more of those which show up on my Facebook page, but I'd like to somehow connect that to the website. Um, is that a possibility? Ooh, that's a great question. I believe um, there's a plugin where you can have um, your social survey reviews show up on your website. So okay. let me... Because otherwise for blogging, I mean, it's just not something I do just because I don't blog. Yeah. Um, 
So I guess any other ideas would be good. Um, I don't know. I mean, what's kind of what we're talking about? I mean, what'd be a, an average price to pay somebody to kind of do all this if I would just want to pay somebody? I mean, is this like a $500 project or a $3,000 project? Or, you know, what are the options outside of free that are affordable? Um, so for for blogging, you have, you have three main courses that we recommend. Probably, probably not the blogging. Unless that's going to be a huge thing, I'd rather just pay somebody to kind of build a website, do the LinkedIn stuff, kind of everything we talked about. And then, you know, go in periodically once every quarter, six months and update it as needed. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I want to get, you know, whatever 80% of it needs to be done. Um, you know, that's what I want to get to. I mean, what's the majority of stuff? There's going to be all these little tweaks that, you know, probably paying somebody, you know, unless they're going to make a lot of money off the website. Um, it's probably not worth doing that, but I still want to have a good website for people to go to that when they do search for me, they're able to find me. Right. Okay. <laughs> so um, I guess it's a big question, and maybe that's something we can talk outside of this. Um, would be a better idea. It's up to you. But that's, I guess, being on this call, that's what I was hoping to get out of this. Is just building your website presence. Okay. So website, how you get ranked, um, is there there's some key factors one is and that's on, that you can't control is just the amount of time that your domain has been live the longer you've had a domain with active website visitors the higher google is going to rank you and consider you a trusted source so step one it's a it's a time game step two um, is the amount of content and the type of content you have on your website so <clears throat> do you have uh, a website that ha lays out all of the different service areas. Do you have a different landing page for each of the lines of business that you write with um, descriptions, informations, uh, informations, um, like descriptions of why that's needed, what is it, um, how do you help serve that, a different quote form on each of those pages, because these are all words, um, resources, content that Google then scrubs and ranks you for. So the more content you have on your site, the better. Um, that's where having a blog is really helpful. That's where pulling down carrier stuff about all the different types of lines and using their resources, that's all free, getting that going on your website. That right. is get you ranked so that's where all that stuff comes into play <clears throat> that's where you're saying the blogging builds content because of oh, yeah. the, the words okay that makes sense then thank you for answering that yeah okay. um the other one is um the amount of different links that um your website is linked to or people link back to your site so buying to get to your question if you're on linkedin if it asking if it asks for a website, make sure your website is listed. If it asks for, you know, you have your review page, you can copy and paste your Google review links. Have that in your description. Um, make sure you're guest posting. Make sure if you're if you're coordinating with a business, they're linking back to your site. Um, every time you have the opportunity to have a profile or a, a local directory, make sure it always has your website on it. That's huge in ranking. Um, the other one is reviews. So how do you do this? What's the what's the cost? It was the other kind of part of your question. Um, mm -hmm. You can do it. You can do it for for free if you pull down all the carrier websites and you sit and you go through all the different directories and you post it. Um, there's also a, a an app you, that's kind of worth the money called Yext. Um, that automatically lists you on all the main local directories and really helps boost your, your getting found online. It's Y-E-X-T. Okay. Um, or if you don't have the time to pull all of that down, um, it might be worth paying for, say, um, a freelance writer for your website. And okay. those, you can pay like 35 cents a word um, so we're not talking big bucks here at all. Um, okay. you, you pay them once they've turned in a blog. You pay them once you've, they've turned in a web page. I mean, um, just go to, what's it called? Upwork, uh, upwork.com. Upwork 
tons of freelancers, tons of website people out there. You set your budget and they can be, they can be really affordable. Or, okay. um, or you go to some place that does a full service. Like, and, and again, we recommend Agency Revolution because we've cut such a significant deal with them for you guys. Um, so it's worth kind of exploring what they offer and what it costs so that you can see what it looks like uh, from the full and full service spectrum. And that's agency, agencyrevolution.com? Yeah. Mention yeah. your, or you can go to grow at agencyrevolution.com and they'll know instantly you're an ASNOA member and they'll give you a price quote and, and walk you through this exact thing because they, they focus on um, websites and email marketing so they can answer all your website questions. Okay. Um, so that. Yeah. Thank you, Megan. Yeah, of course. Um, let's see. Any other questions that we have not added? Jamie, we got you listed for um, checking out that social survey on your webpage for sure. Bonnie, I hope I answered your question about getting your link on LinkedIn. Perfect. Okay. Bonnie, Google My Business, get it on your phone and send a request for review to their cell phone. Bonnie, what is your question about your Google My Business page? No? All right. No, that's just that is just a suggestion. Um okay, great. To, to everybody. I send I send on Google My Business, there's a way for you to send a link to a customer's email or their or their cell phone, and you can. That's how I've grown to 50 reviews um, in the last couple months. Because when we, whenever a customer is happy and they're they're leaving our office, or even if it's over the phone, I ask them, can, "Do you mind giving us a review?" <laughs> I mean, it's really that simple. Do you mind? We we're just a small company. We'd like to. We need your help in growing our business so we can help other people. Would you mind giving us a review? I can send you a text message. And it's the easiest thing to do. It's really the you just click on the link and you type and, and it goes right to Google. All right. That is an awesome suggestion. Thank you, Bonnie. Okay. So I think we'll stay on just for a few more minutes. If there's any more questions, unmute yourself. Um chat it in. If you have any questions on the specific campaign that you guys are putting together, um, just let us know. We're going to follow up sending this as a recording as well as um, the slides and then all the different resources we talked about. And then I've also added notes here to get an answer about social survey. And then Maddie's going to talk about how, how you set up your Yelp and Facebook. Anything else you want us to send in the follow up, let us know. All right. And just to wrap that up, I just want to say, Megan and Maddie, thank you so much for highlighting the steps involved in developing an effective marketing campaign. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you all for joining today's as known as University Spotlight. And yeah, if there are any additional questions, please go ahead and contact training at asnoa.com. And if you guys could all take a moment to complete the evaluation at the end of today's session, that would um, be greatly appreciated. So thank you all so much and have a great day.